Despite the ban on aircraft development imposed by the Western Allies after the First World War, during the 1930s, the Germans made extensive and outstanding progress in this field. New technologies, including rocket and jet-powered aircraft, were being developed, which led to the creation of the rocket-engine-powered HE-176 and jet-engine-powered HE-178. While these would not be accepted for service, they proved that such a concept was feasible and set the stage for later models, such as the ME-163 and the ME-262. The aircraft we study on this channel costs a lot of money, and when you consider the sheer size of the United States military arsenals and the aid going into Ukraine, you can see why the defense industry was one of the few sectors that didn't crash and burn with the stock market last year. However, there is an alternative asset class that has appreciated in value during times of economic turmoil, and today's sponsor, Masterworks, has unlocked the potential of one of those assets, contemporary art. Over the past 26 years, contemporary art prices have outpaced the S&P 500 by 131%, and with Masterworks, you can invest in art from legendary names like Picasso, Banksy, and Monet without needing to sell your tank collection to do so. In the past 12 months, while stocks and bonds were suffering double-digit losses, Masterworks investors realized returns from 9% to 36%. Over 617,000 people have signed up so far, and our viewers can claim free, no-obligation accounts now at the link in the description. However, before we go back to our futuristic planes, a word of caution. Investing while rewarding is also risky, and just like in the military, information and knowledge are key. Thus, while we happily encourage you to check out our sponsor, we would also like to encourage you to read as much as possible about investments and art and make informed decisions. Following the end of the Great War, Germany was forbidden from having an air force, though this did not stop the Germans from experimenting with new aviation technology, such as rocket propulsion. One such flight using rocket propulsion occurred at the end of the 1930s, led by aviation enthusiast Fritz von Opel. Another stepping stone in rocketry research was achieved through the work of Werner von Braun, in 1935, he managed to come into contact with Dr. Ernst Heinkel, who was highly impressed with von Braun's work. Dr. Heinkel promised to provide von Braun with any assistance in his work and even provided a few HE-112 airframes for testing. These were initially used for simple ground testing where a fixed airframe featured a rocket engine placed in the rear of the aircraft fuselage. Soon after that, it was decided to test this engine in a flight. One modified HE-112, piloted by Eric Varsitz, managed to take it to the sky using the aircraft's original piston engine. At about 450 meters, Varsitz activated the rocket engine, and during the 30 seconds of the engine burn phase, a speed of over 400 kilometers per hour was reached. Following these tests, officials from the Reich Luftfahrt Ministerium began showing interest in the prospect of using a rocket-powered aircraft interceptor. The work on this project was conducted under a veil of secrecy and began in 1936, and in the following year, the first drawings of the HE-176 were completed. Interestingly, the designers had a huge task in front of them, with the goal of trying to reach a blistering speed of 1,000 kilometers per hour. This would be an astonishing and difficult feat to achieve with such a novel design, and this set a number of challenges that had to be overcome. One of these challenges was a properly designed wing able to withstand the pressure of such a high speed. In order to make the whole design smaller and thus save weight, the pilot had to be placed in a rather unpleasant semi-recumbent position with his legs stretched out in front and the pilot's seat reclined. This was also done to help the pilot better cope with the extreme G-forces that he would be subjected to during the extremely high forward acceleration. Once the aircraft was completed, it was to be transported to Pinamunda in June 1938. The initial tests were undertaken on the ground, but due to unsuitable terrain and lack of a proper towing vehicle, ground testing proved ineffective. So it was decided to use the aircraft's own Walter RI engine for these tests, which were conducted at the end of 1938. Using the HE-176's own engine on the ground presented a new problem. 
namely that the rudder could not provide steering during takeoff. As the aircraft had no propellers to generate airflow, steering the aircraft using the rudder on takeoff was ineffective, and thus the only way to maintain the aircraft's heading was by using the left and right brakes on the main wheels. This was quite dangerous for the pilot and the aircraft, as an imbalanced braking force could potentially lead to an accident. The result of the initial testing showed that some changes to the overall structural design were needed. For this, the Heinkel crew spent the winter of 1939 modifying the HE-176. While the first official flight of the HE-176 was to be conducted under the supervision of many RLM officials, there was a feeling that something might go wrong, and Varsitz and Heinkel's team, without the knowledge of Dr. Heinkel, decided to perform the actual first flight in secrecy. The date for this was set on the 20th of June, 1939. After a rough takeoff, the pilot managed to take the HE-176 to the sky. Given the small fuel load, the flight lasted for around a minute. Overall, the first test flight was deemed a success. A couple of days later, Varsitz and Heinkel's team were informed that any further flights were forbidden because Hitler himself became interested in the project and wanted to personally see the aircraft. The HE-176 was to be transported to the Rechlin Secret Test Center and shown to many high-ranking members of the Luftwaffe. In parallel with rocket engine development, German scientists, including Hans Joachim, began working on jet engine technology. By 1935, he managed to patent his first jet engine while working at the University of Göttingen. The following year, Dr. Heinkel meets with Joachim to discuss the possible use of this engine. Dr. Heinkel was very interested in the development of jet-powered aircraft and immediately employed Joachim and his team to work for his company. In 1936, Joachim and his team began building the first working prototype jet engine, using hydrogen gas as the main fuel, named the Heinkel Straubdivrick 1, or the HES-1. The HES-1 was not intended as an operational engine, but for testing and demonstration purposes only. It was built and tested in early 1937 and was considered successful, so the research continued. By March of 1938, the third HES-3 jet engine was able to achieve 450 kilograms of thrust during testing. In May of 1939, testing of the improved HES-3A engine began. At the same time, field testing was done by attaching this engine to a piston-powered aircraft. For this reason, an HE-118 was equipped with this auxiliary test jet engine. The pilot chosen for this test flight was none other than Varsitz. When the HE-118 reached the designated height using the piston engine, the pilot then activated the auxiliary jet engine. During this flight, the HE-118 powered by the HES-3A jet engine managed to achieve 380 kilograms of thrust. More test flights were carried out with the modified HE-118 until it was destroyed in a fire due to an accident during landing. Despite this accident, the final version of the HES-3B jet engine was intended to be mounted on the Heinkel-designed HE-178 aircraft. Interestingly, the whole HE-178 development began as a private venture. This project was also under the veil of secrecy, and the RLM was never informed of its beginning. Dr. Heinkel gathered the designers and technical directors to reveal to them, we want to build a special aircraft with a jet drive. The RLM is not to know anything about the 178. I take full responsibility. Dr. Heinkel was possibly motivated by a desire to get an early advantage over the other German aircraft manufacturers. The first HE-178 mock-up was ready by the end of August 1938. Dr. Heinkel was, in general, satisfied with the design, but asked for some modifications to the cockpit, including an emergency escape hatch door for the pilot on the starboard side. The following year, both the HE-178 airframe and the HES-3B jet engine were ready, so the completion of the first working prototype was possible. The first HE-178 prototype was completed by June of 1939, when it was transported to the Rechlin Test Center. In July of 1939, both the HE-176 and 178 aircraft were to be demonstrated to a large military delegation, including Adolf Hitler and Hermann Goering. During this presentation, 
The HE-178 was not taken to the sky, as it was not yet properly flight tested. Next in the line for inspection was the HE-176, and after a brief examination of its interior by the delegation, the stage was set for it to take to the sky. The flight initially went well, but the pilot miscalculated and shut down the engine too soon. While still at high speed, he began descending rather rapidly. After several attempts to restart the engine, he finally succeeded, just before hitting the ground. The plane then entered an almost vertical climb of some 50 meters before the pilot regained control and landed it safely. Hitler and his delegation were under the impression that the pilot performed this maneuver intentionally to demonstrate the aircraft's potential. After the Rechlin exhibit, Heinkel's team tried to prepare the HE-176 for reaching speeds up to 1,000 kilometers per hour. Structural analysis of the design, on the other hand, showed that this would not be possible. For this reason, preparation for the construction of a second prototype started. Ultimately, the project would be canceled by the order of Adolf Hitler. He insisted that designs that could not enter production in less than a year be canceled. Despite Heinkel's attempt to win over Udet's support, it went nowhere and the project was officially terminated. The almost complete second prototype was scrapped, while work on the third prototype was abandoned. The HE-178 was transported back to the Heinkel factory in order to prepare it for its first operational test flight. It was made on the 27th of August of 1939, Varsitz was instructed by the Heinkel engineers not to fly this aircraft at high speeds, mostly due to the fixed undercarriage. During this flight, there was a problem with the fuel pump, but despite this, the pilot managed to land successfully, albeit with some difficulty. During the following months, Hans Joachim tried to improve his rocket engine with little success. While the RLM lost interest in this aircraft, Heinkel would continue experimenting with it. In 1941, the HE-178, with fully operational landing gear, managed to achieve a maximum speed of 700 kilometers per hour with the HES-6 jet engine. But by this point, Heinkel was focused on the development of the more advanced HE-280. This led to the final abandonment of the HE-178 project. Work on two more prototypes, which were similar in appearance but larger in dimensions, was terminated. Both the HE-176 and 178 working prototypes were eventually given to the Berlin Aviation Museum to be put on display. These were lost in 1943 during an Allied bombing raid. This concludes our look at the first German rocket and jet-propelled aircraft, the HE-176 and 178. What do you think about these two? Were they just the first stepping stones, or could their further development lead to viable aircraft designs to be used in combat? Let us know in the comments. If you like what we do and want to see more, remember to subscribe so you don't miss a single video. Also, don't forget to take a look at our extensive collection of articles on our website, plane-encyclopedia.com. Thank you.